This is your other brother's podcast. Sorta. What's up, homies? Thank you for being here. My name is Tom, and I'm the editor and co-founder of Your Other Brothers, and we're a community navigating faith, homosexuality, masculinity, and coronavirus together. This is the Corona Convo cast, and I'm excited to bring back our faithful brother, who's so, so great. He's been here before, and he's back again. It's our other brother, Marshall. What's up, Marshall? Hey, Tom. Hey, everybody else. Hello, hello. Marshall, the pandemic is still going. Fun times. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been um, actually more touching me than it did before or affecting me. Uh, one of my uh, mm. friends uh, is infected. Um, he seems to be doing well. He's uh, probably about 30 years old and uh, oh, wow. very strong, and I think he'll be fine. So is it one of your local friends there or just a friend you have abroad somewhere? Uh, yeah, he was a friend from the same church. Uh, okay. He's probably, he does not live in the same house with me. That's what I was wondering. I was like, no. surely not, <laughs> not, not no. your house. Cause that could probably present some, some issues. Yes, it would. But no, he's, uh, he's actually, I think living in Baltimore right now, which is a good distance from where I live. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I haven't actually seen him for several months, so it's a whole different story. Yeah. Well, we talked last time about, uh, you know, we had you on a couple of weeks ago, the pandemic was just kind of ramping up, I guess. And um, you had mentioned that you were living in this house now with how many people? Uh, what's, what's the count up to? I think there are 15 of us, but, uh, you know, there are other people that uh, uh, don't live, live here, but they want <laughs> to live here and are kind of spending a few nights every once in a while. So, you know what this reminds me of? And what? You may not, this is going to be a bridging of the the generations as we talk about. Mm -hmm. So lately, last few episodes, I, for some reason, TikTok keeps coming up in conversations. <laughs> and so do, first of all, A, do you know what TikTok is? Are you familiar or know about what it is? About what it is. Yeah. I think it's a replacement for Vine, right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's like it's, short form videos and people mm -hmm. do like dancing and it's funny. And so people yep. use it for lots of things, but um, but it just reminded, I don't want to spend too much time on TikTok, but it reminded me that there's like this group of kids. Well, I call them kids. They're probably like 18, 19, 20 years old, something like that. But they like have this gigantic mansion in Los Angeles and they call it the hype house. And it's basically a bunch of these little, these little baby, little baby boys and girls who are all on TikTok and they live in this giant house together making TikTok videos like in the bathroom or in the kitchen or whatever. <laughs> and it just makes me think that you, you guys could be the next hype house. You guys could all be on TikTok. You could all make TikTok <laughs> together. I, for one, would love to see what Marshall comes up with. <laughs> I, I think Richard um, Padilla, Padilla is the only one that I know who's over 30 on TikTok, unless you've started. Oh, um, I'm on it. I, oh, I had okay. To, well, I, had I guess... To, I had to know what the Gen Z kids are up to. I have to stay aware. Okay. I have to stay in the loop. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I'm a little older than that. <laughs> I don't. So I, I don't know if that would work. Yeah. I wouldn't sell yourself short, Marshall. I think you could pull it off. <laughs> I think you could pull off some uh, some nice TikToks. Well, uh, we'll see. I I may not be the world's greatest entertainer performer, but we'll see. The key, the key, Marshall, is getting your entire house on board. If you can get everybody on TikTok, then it amplifies everybody's abilities. So that's something you should prayerfully consider. <laughs> All right, so we're back. The listeners don't know this, but Marshall, your computer had a meltdown. <laughs> Are you still there? <laughs> oh, I'm still here, but I'm on my phone. So if the audio sounds a little different, it's a... It's uh, just a, uh, yeah, it's a different flavor of Marshall. We have a uh, different, yep. yeah, different, different audio quality, but you're still there. So that's good. It's one of those things. One of the themes of the Corona Convo cast is people's technology starts, stops <laughs> working. My primary microphone stopped working. Ryan's software stopped working. Now your computer shut down. So I'm sure it's just a matter of time before it's almost like we have a virus extending out amongst our, our podcast guests. So hopefully... Hopefully it doesn't continue, but nonetheless, um, what are, what are any updates in your life right now? I know you, you had mentioned your father and just kind of where the state that he's in right now, what's, what's going on there? 
yeah, it's a very difficult situation. My father's 91 years old. Um, he has been in a nursing home for almost three years. Um, it's a long story, but there's been a long, slow decline in his health. Um, you know, no uh, one big event, but he just slowly became less able to walk. Then he slowly became less able to uh, go around in a wheelchair. Eventually, he had difficulty even sitting up in a wheelchair. Um, then he became confined to bed, you know, a few months ago. And I've been visiting him as often as I can, which because he lives a good distance away from me, that's maybe once every two months. Um, but recently, with the coronavirus, they've closed the nursing home to any mm -hmm. visitors, including family. And so I haven't been able to see him. Um, but what happened was he developed pneumonia, got sent to the hospital. It was not the coronavirus, not COVID-19. It was um, bacterial pneumonia. And he was able to recover from that. He's back in the nursing home. But they discovered all kinds of things when he was in the hospital. Basically, um, he said several minor strokes that have added up to more and more disability. Um, they said it's not exactly Alzheimer's, but he certainly has much less mental ability due to some of the stroke damage. But, you know, one thing is that it's literally affecting his ability to eat. And so there are all these difficult decisions and situations that are having to be faced and dealt with now with me not able to be there. I just have to talk to the people on the phone. So it's very emotionally difficult. You know, I've had doctors say he, he will only live a few more weeks, but you can't see him. And, you know, it's just a very, very difficult situation because they have all these rules about you can't enter a nursing home now uh, if you're a visit as a visitor. So, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, fighting a lot of emotions related to that. Yeah, man, that's that's really rough. That's you hear the stories of like, um, yeah, people in hospitals or nursing homes that are, are blocked off to visitors, but man, especially in a time like that, where, you know, your father may be entering the the last weeks or months or however long of his life. And you can't like, it's, that's gotta be like a really just helpless feeling to just not know what you can yeah. do, you know? Right. There's not much that I can do humanly. Um, you know, I can talk to him, uh, Every time I talk to him, I don't know if it's the last time. Um, I talked to him about a week ago. He was able to talk, and he definitely knew it was me. That's good. So that was good. But well, I'm, I was told by one of the nurses that he didn't recognize her. Actually, nurse's aide, but whatever. He didn't recognize her, but she was seeing him every day for years. And so I'm concerned that he won't recognize me when I try calling him today. So we'll see how that works. But it's uh, just a difficult the whole situation is not easy, but end of life is never easy. And yeah. uh, I'm glad that I know the creator of life, God himself. He, you know, he is the only one that I can go to that can really help me get through some of this. Yeah. It was about a year ago, almost a year ago that my grandfather had passed away and it was really just simultaneously difficult, of course, but also relieving to kind of see to see it finally reach, to see him finally reach the end because he had a really hard go the last couple of years of his life after going through a stroke and being bedridden. And, and he used to be such a dynamic, like speaker and, and amazing storyteller and, and had all these incredible stories and abilities with, with, with the stage and with public speaking and, and to just like see all of that taken away and to have no faculties really left. Like um, there was a lot of, a lot of caregiving going on in my grandfather's house and, um, I can tell that it, it took a toll on, on the people around him. And, um, and so it's a simultaneous relief. Like when you know what his eternal destination is, like there's a comfort there that like he was a strong, strong believer in Jesus and, um, you know, took every opportunity to, to point people to him when he, when he told the stories and when he interacted with, with people everywhere. And so, so there's a comfort there for sure that, uh, that, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that it exists. And so I know you can share that with, with your father too. Yes. My father is definitely a believer. He uh, is one of the ways God used to uh, bring me to be a believer. So yeah. um, I wrote several things about that and uh, that have been posted yeah. in uh, Yab. Well, people can read that if they want, but my father is, uh, 
I'm very convinced will go to be with the Lord. And uh, I, that definitely brings me a certain level of, uh, how to say it, the right kind of grieving instead of the wrong kind yeah. of grieving. Yeah. Well, prayers for you, Marshall. Yeah. And if anyone wants to check out any of Marshall's posts, you can go to our website and we'll have a link there for all of Marshall's posts. Cause yeah, you've written your, about your father at least a few times. Um, Marshall, I don't know, switching gears. I don't know if you can hear the obnoxious lawnmower outside of my window. Can you hear that at all? No, not on these <laughs> particular phone. I don't know if it's picking up I hope it's not picking up for the listeners. That's, I don't know. I, I get the sense that it doesn't sound as pristine as usual, but um, I complain about my neighborhood because people cut their grass pretty much every day here. But I suppose that's nice because when I go around, I, it is really a beautiful neighborhood, but, um, but it makes recording sometimes really inconvenient because this has happened multiple times where I record a podcast and people are mowing the grass, like multiple people mowing their grass at the same time outside of my window. And, and I've, I've yet to fully soundproof my studio. Maybe that'll happen in the next few months or so. But, uh, but yeah, it's not, not the most convenient thing. But I just wanted to put that out there in case you hear this obnoxious roaring sounds in the background. Wanted to, big update, Marshall, on my life. And I wanted to ask you too, because I know you've moved around a lot, right? We talked on our last podcast about you were in Seattle oh, yeah. and California and, and back to the, the DC area now. Um, so you've moved around a lot. I wanted to ask you, do you own furniture <laughs> or what do you own? What are like the physical things that you own? Cause I'm curious living in a house with 15 people. Um, I'm curious what all, yeah. What, what do you call yours? <laughs> <laughs> um, I probably should. Well, anyway, I can let you see, but of course there's no video for the listeners. Um, I have a, uh, folding table, um, a chair that I'm sitting in, a few um, what people might call nightstand dressers, which are basically, um, you buy them at Walmart, and they're made of plastic. Um, oh, those little sliding drawers. I think I have one of those, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, that's those. That's those. I've got that, and I have a bed that was um, put together from two-by-fours, four-by-fours, and looks like uh, anyway um just all wood from a <laughs> lumber yard um one of my housemates put that together nice. and um <laughs> yeah uh what do you call it a foam mattress so yes it's not very fancy um it's all easily you can take it apart and haul it in a car not a truck a car gotcha <laughs> so i had the sense like that 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 was that's what you were working with that's that's what you're working with. because honestly up yep. until Gosh, like probably up until a year ago, that's what I was working with too. And ever since I moved into my my new apartment last year, I have been slowly acquiring various pieces of furniture. Because usually, I'm for most of my adult life, I've lived with other people, and so I kind of just benefited from whatever furniture they had. Um, kind of sad, but like the first year and a half of living on living with people, like I slept on an air mattress. I didn't even purchase a bed until last year. So like this is all very new to me, the acquiring furniture. Cause I, I have a decent sized apartment. And when I first moved in, it was quite barren and empty. And it's been like a slow process of, of filling it in of like getting a bed and getting a dining room table. And I got like my couch from my, my parents' house. And, and so now I have all this like assortment of furniture. And the reason I bring all that up is because just before recording today, um, my dear sweet parents, they got me a, a birthday present. Um, cause my, I celebrated my birthday last week and they got me a bedroom dresser because so far up until now I've been keeping my clothing in a little nightstand or straight out of a suitcase. Like I just have a bunch of clothes in my suitcase and I just pull them out when I need it. Um, so now I have like literally an hour ago, I had this gigantic dresser delivered to my apartment. And it's currently sitting in my living room in a gigantic, like 115 pound box. And so I will now have a project <laughs> to keep me busy all day long today of putting this dresser together. And for the first time in my adult life, bringing my clothing out of a dresser. So I feel like, Marshall, I've really gained some ground here in the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a little more conventional. Yeah, of course, I'm always unconventional, but yeah, I... 
I've, uh, I've tried that before. Um, oh, years ago, I used to live in a more conventional house and had my own furniture and everything, but, uh, I don't know how to describe it other than, um, I didn't need it anymore. I didn't want it anymore. So I gave it nice. up. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's just, I like to live a lot more simply. Yeah. There's, this is like the paradox of my life right now, because I absolutely resonate with that word unconventional. Like I want to live an unconventional life, but here's the thing, getting furniture and living in an apartment and making it homey, that's unconventional for my life. So it's kind of this paradox where it's probably really normal for most people to get furniture and to live in a place. But to me, that is very unconventional. And so it's kind of this paradox where I'm repelled by it, but I'm also drawn to it. And maybe it's just the season of my life where for the next couple of years or longer, I don't know, but maybe this is how I live. I live with furniture in my house <laughs> versus maybe more so a way that you're living in a place with 15 people. Maybe that'll be something that I do again. Who knows? Well, we'll see. But the point is that uh, everybody doesn't have to live like this at all. You know, in my unconventional style, um, it's very good for me. And yeah, you know, I recommend people try it because you'd be surprised how great it can yeah. be. <laughs> but it's not for everybody. I recognize that there are many ways to find uh, community to build a home, <laughs> um, and everyone has to find their own way. As long as they're being, um, you know, there's some interaction with other people, and you're not always alone. Yeah, yeah, that's the challenge of living alone. Whether whether you're an extrovert or an introvert is like making the time to still stay connected. And and in many ways, for me, like yeah, that's been helpful to uh, to live alone and have my. I'll always have my alone time. Like that's never that's never a, a thing that's up that I have to fight for. Like I'll always have that. What I do have to fight for is is the connection with other people time. And and in many ways, yeah, living alone it kind of motivates you to to do that, to be like, okay, well, I can't stay alone for a long time, which is admittedly a challenge during something like a pandemic, because when there's a quarantine and, and people aren't intermingling, like that is challenging to stay, to stay connected during a time like this. That's been, it's been a wrench in the plans in a lot of ways, but, um, but that's again, where digital, the digital connections are not ideal, but they are, they are something. They're certainly more than nothing. Right. And I certainly thank God for them because obviously I would never have you as a friend if it weren't for that. Yeah. Among so many others. Yeah. Oh yeah. Many people could say that. Yes. Well, Marshall here, we have like a minute or two left. I wanted to bring something up with you. I feel like you're a perfect person to bring this up with. I don't know if you're familiar with this person or not, but I wanted to to mention his name and, and give him his due. Are you familiar with Cy Rogers at all? Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you had heard Marshall, but yesterday he passed away. And um, yes, I heard. What's um? So for all those don't know, Cy Rogers, he was a former president of Exodus International, and he, you know, did lots of things. He had an incredible eclectic story and life. Um, but uh, I, when I look at his story, and I first heard about him at Exodus, the first Exodus conference I went to in two thousand nine, he uh, he gave one of the most like dynamic messages that I'd ever heard. Like he's just an incredible public speaker with an incredible testimony, um, a great sense of humor and, um, you know, controversial for some people, but everybody in this like side B world <laughs> is, is controversial by definition, I feel. Um, so people will draw their lines and define him however they will, but um, he's got a ton of YouTube videos and sermons and messages that he gives out there. And I definitely recommend people check him out, but did you have any like um, any thoughts or inclinations about him while while you were like going to conferences or, or heard about him or even heard him speak or anything? Well, I never actually got to hear him speak. To okay, be honest, I was I've never even seen a YouTube video. Um, I know wasn't he transgender and then went yeah, back? that's part of his story is that he like for a year and a half was transitioning to be a woman and then reverse course on that. Um, and that's part of his, his coming to faith story of, of encountering the Lord and encountering Jesus and, and walking with him. And yeah, he's just got, that's, it's just like, of course. And he was also like in the Navy. And so it was just like all kinds of, uh, he's got the, the most unique story I've ever heard, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. I knew that he was very well known. I, you know, from all I heard, he, um, you know, there were many things yeah. to admire about his courage. Well, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out because I'm sure plenty of people listening know about him. If, you, if you're familiar with the Exodus days that existed, um, he was involved a little bit with that. But 
Um, of course, whenever you share your life story and talk about Jesus doing things, that's going to be controversial to a lot of people, but, um, but I invite people to check him out. Like he, he's one of the most dynamic speakers I've ever heard with an incredible testimony. Um, I'm sure many would, would criticize him for maybe not making enough of sexuality. Um, I know there's a, there's a fierce debate, um, today in Christianity, about using labels and what, what do we, how do we describe sexuality? What language do we put to it? How much do we make an, enough of it? In what ways are we not saying enough about it? In what ways are we saying too much about it? Um, but what I appreciated about Sai's message, it was a consistency. Um, and he has all these amazing YouTube from churches putting, putting his, his story on YouTube and other conferences. Um, a consistent refrain is uh, that I appreciate about Sai's the way Sai lived and the way Sai spoke um, was that all of humanity is on an equal playing field. We all have things to reckon with. And for some, sexuality is a, is a big piece of that reckoning um, and allowing the Lord to work and mold and evolve you <laughs> over and over and over again. Um, and I know I'm just speaking for me personally. Um, there have been times... Maybe it's my, my Enneagram fourness, but there have been times where I want to make my sexuality or I want to make my, my differentness more than it is. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm wired so differently from other men and from other believers in the church that, um, that I require, somehow I require extra attention or extra work or something. Um, and again, that's not to negate that I need work and that I need a lot of help <laughs> in this journey. But, um, but yeah, what I appreciate about Sai is just that message that we're all broken. We all need a savior. We all need Jesus. And um, and I just, I love Sai. I got to got to hear him speak a few times, even got to grab brunch with him and a few of our friends when I was living in California. And, you know, I'm already kind of starstruck by people and I have a hard time getting out of my shell in situations like that today, let alone um, eight or nine years ago, however long ago that was. But he was incredibly gracious. Uh, he took the time to to eat with us and to laugh with us and to pay for our meal. And it was um, he was just such a gracious, solid man. And uh, I look forward to to seeing him again one day. And so I just wanted to give him a shout out because he he passed away just yesterday as of this recording. And um, yeah, it just made me made me made me a little sad. So I wanted to close that out for for today's recording. All right, y'all. And if you're interested in anything we're doing with your other brothers, check out yourotherbrothers.com and you can follow us on all the socials at your other bros. And remember, you are not alone. Even the sparrow stays at home. Stay home, y'all, but stay connected. And Marshall, it's so good to see you from your home. And hopefully we'll see each other again soon. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thanks. Awesome, brother. Y'all take it easy. Have a great rest of your day. See you.